Good evening, people. Watch. I'm in 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, future, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life that's the gospel that's how we're saved that's how we're kept saved how do you come to that you admit you're a sinner in need of Christ when you put your faith and trust in Christ not only are you saved but you're rapture ready justified by the blood of Jesus and sealed until the day of redemption which means you will not lose your salvation you're sealed the Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you. Sorry about that. Uh, the Holy Spirit will guide you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. He will change you. That's the gospel. I got to give you this article tonight. Uh, Ukraine just hit a Russian town. This just came in off of RT. It's breaking right now. It says here that uh, Ukraine attacks a Russian town. The artillery strike killed one civilian and cut the power to Veluki, Belgorod region, governor said. Uh, as a result of a Ukrainian artillery attack, one civilian was killed, two were wounded in the town of Bel uh, in, a, in Belgorod region uh, shortly after midnight. Tonight, their town, their time. So it says preliminary information information indicates one civilian was killed while medical aid was rendered on the scene. Two more people were injured. Public buildings will be switched to alternative power supply, the governor said, adding um, that top regional and local officials are now on the scene. Now, while that came out, I had mentioned this in a video this morning about she off of Hal Turner's um, blah uh, thing that she is going to help Putin. Well, here it is. This goes into more detail. This is off of RT. It says China will work with Russia as great powers. The Chinese leader said he is willing to work alongside Moscow to increase stability in the world. That's what he said. So this goes on to say, it's basically repeating, not, it goes into a little bit more detail of what happened. What he, what I was saying in the video this morning. So Chinese, um, she. wants to work with Moscow to take on the responsibilities of great powers. He told Russian counterpart on Thursday at the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in uh, Samarkand, China is willing to make efforts with Russia to assume the role of great powers and play a guiding role to inject stability and positive energy. Now we're talking new age. Positive energy into a world rocked by social turmoil. She told Russian President Putin during a leader summit at the SOSCO. Putin likewise praised the multifaceted ties the two countries have forged, in particular with trade relationships, highlighting the exchange of $140 billion in trade with Beijing last year. He noted that the volume had increased 25% in the first half of 2022 and said he hoped the figure could reach 200 billion by the end of the year. 
or more. The Russian leader affirmed Moscow's uh, support for Beijing's one China policy and condemned the attempts at pro uh, provocations by the United States in and around Taiwan. Let me stop there. Don't think they're not planning to do something because with Ukraine hitting that Russian town, they hit that town with American-made missiles and American weaponry. Don't think the two of them aren't planning to do something. And like I said, they're, I don't think it's going to be... God only knows what it's going to be. But it's going to hit in the pocketbook. That's where it's going to hit. Don't I, you know what? I wouldn't even doubt for a moment that everything, even this rail strike, was orchestrated. I, I just wouldn't even doubt it. And keep in mind that rail strike that was averted—that's a tentative agreement, which means they don't have to agree upon it. I've been involved in strikes before. It's not fun. I was at a high, I worked at a hospital and was involved in a strike and uh, we had a tentative agreement that no one agreed upon. And guess what? We went back out. So this is still in the air about what's going to happen here. This is in the air about what China's going to do, but it's going to be bad. Either way, you, either way it goes. So the organization includes... Um, Yeah, he said, acknowledging that China, Chinese may have questions and concerns about the future of the conflict, he pledged to explain everything in detail again. The organization includes countries with different cultural and civilization traditions, foreign policy guidelines, and models of national development. However, building work on the principles of equality and mutual benefit, respect for each other's sovereignty, and refusal to interfere in internal affairs made it possible to turn this organization into an effective mechanism for multilateral cooperation. The SCO has been meeting for over two decades and bring together nearly half the planet's population, encompassing eight states that cover over half the world's territory. Don't think they're not after global uh, domination. The United States, they want the United States out. And they're going to do what they can to get it done. And with this leadership that's involved, <clears throat> it's not going to be difficult. Not at all. And this came in just a few minutes ago. And I guess Putin is in a, he's backed up in a corner now. Unprecedented anger in Russia. So they're talking about here, a boiling point in, is Russia and the country's military. This is where they're at right now. With the Council of the State Duma, the lower house, Considering the possibility of summoning Defense Minister Sergei Shigo to ask him questions in a closed session, the Russian newspaper wrote today, citing well-known Deputy Sergei Marinov. It is only a matter of time before there are sweeping changes in the staff of the Russian Armed Forces. Um, Shugo and the military administration of the Western region will leave. Or should I say die? One or the other. Indicative of the situation is what, uh, what is heard on Russian television. Russian analysis and military experts are now openly admitting failure and calling for immediate drastic changes. 
probably because Ukraine is kicking their butts. That's what it looks like. But the problem is, like I said a few minutes ago, Ukraine is using U.S. NATO weaponry. So that means that, and back to Hal Turner's, um, article here that also just came out a few minutes ago. The Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs this morning issued a final warning to the United States and NATO regarding Ukraine. So all of this ties in together. You got China, China's President Xi, working together with Putin to bring about global domination. That includes getting rid of the United States. And can they do it? Like I said a few minutes ago, with this administration, anything is possible. Anything bad is possible. And it will happen. Eventually. So, they issued a final warning to the United States and NATO regarding Ukraine. If the U.S. decides to supply, remember I did a video on this the other day, that the U.S. is deciding to supply long-range missiles to Ukraine. If the United States decides to supply longer range missiles to Ukraine, they will cross the red line and become a direct party to the conflict, officially. This final warning was spoken by Maria Zakharova, spokeswoman for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. This is a rapidly developing story and of course, I will check back for details. This isn't good for the U.S., but you call, you know the U.S. is pushing this thing, and uh, you know they're going to push it until they push for war, until we are in the middle of a full-fledged war, folks. We're not in the middle of World War Three. We're World War Three is not starting. World War Three is here. We're on the brink of a nuclear disaster. Is what it sounds like. And this administration don't give a crap about anybody but themselves. So, there you go. I'm going to link this article in the description box, and I'm going to link the other RT articles there also. It's all together now. All the dominoes are in place now. We're just sitting on G, waiting on O to get out of here by the Lord himself. And we shall see what happens. I'm keeping up with this strike with the rails because I don't think, and I haven't heard anything today, I don't think that um, uh, Amtrak, I think Amtrak is still not doing any, I, I might be wrong, I don't think they're doing any long range uh, trips. I don't think they resumed that, so but I will keep up with it. I don't think so. I haven't heard anything too much about it today, but I will be back later if I don't come back on. If something happens tonight, I will be back on tonight, but God willing, I will be back tomorrow. And love you all. God bless you. Thank you.